This is the Aviation Business Podcast, the podcast that equips your aviation business to achieve a higher altitude. Now, here's your host, Tim Bonnell. Well, welcome to the Aviation Business Podcast. Uh, if you've been a regular listen, a listener of this show for some time, you'll notice that we've been posting episodes less frequently. We've typically had a once per week um, routine of posting. And as we've talked about in the past, we're actually spending a lot of time on a sister podcast called the Aviation Insurance Podcast. So if you've not already done so, you can uh, go to your podcast player of, of choice and search for and subscribe to the Aviation Insurance Podcast if you'd like to learn more about the fundamentals of aviation insurance. So we are still uh, posting weekly. Our team is working diligently at keeping uh, new and updated um, content for you. So we're doing a lot on the fundamentals of aviation insurance right now, but we do like to come back and offer up this aviation business podcast con uh, content and offer up tools and suggestions to help uh, our customers, our prospects, and our industry grow and develop to becoming the people and the businesses that they are able to become. So again, uh, if you've not subscribed, go to your podcast player choice, search for the Aviation Insurance Podcast, or head on over to our website at erisinsurance.com. That's A-E-R-I-S insurance.com and click on the link for the podcast where you'll find both this podcast and the other available in video and audio format. These are also now available on YouTube. So with that, let's get into the content of this episode. And we're going to talk about building healthy momentum. And if you would, just kind of picture in your mind with me having a large boulder. We'll, we'll call it very round boulder, a large stone, where you and a small team of friends or associates, we'll just say three or four people, need to push this boulder up a hill. And we'll say it's not a very steep hill so that we can have some uh, reality to this image. But, you know, it takes quite a bit of energy just to get this rock started, right? You got to push really hard. And once you get a little bit of momentum, it will continue to roll. All right. So as it rolls, we have momentum and it's easier to continue moving it forward in a forward motion. Now, that momentum can change in one of two directions that are not helpful. The first is we can stop. We need to take a break. Uh, or we just uh, decide to pause for a minute for whatever reason. And unfortunately, what happens then is we have to put a lot more energy, exert all that extra force to get it started again and to build momentum. Now, on the flip side of the coin, if we start pushing too hard and too fast, as we get to the top of the hill, we may not be able to stop it. And that stone is going to go flying off somewhere we don't want it to go. So we can be going our, our stops and our pauses can actually create a lot more problems in our momentum as much as is going too fast. So building and maintaining a healthy momentum is very important to everything we do in life that we hope to accomplish. Uh, Michael Corda, the author, said one way to keep momentum going is to have constantly greater goals. Right. So we want to have regular goals that are attainable that we can achieve towards. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Gil uh, Panchina said, momentum begets momentum. And the best way to start is to start. So how do we start building momentum? Uh, it's to start. So often when we talk about time or priority management, we are talking about putting our top priorities into a period of time, but also blocking in uh, things that are are not as important into those schedules so it gets done. But when we're talking about a project or a goal or an activity that needs to be accomplished, the longer that time period, the more the potential is that we're going to put in spaces of time that are too long where there is a loss of momentum in completing that goal, that task, uh, that assignment, that project, right? So, um, you know, as you're going along and you need to re-engage on a project, it will take time off and have meetings to realign and calibrate uh, people may have to spend time re-researching the issue, relearning how to use the technology, picking, you know, finding out where they were as they pick up um, the pieces. And so that goes back to that, that stopping to pause or take a break and pushing the stone up the hill. It's going to take an exponential amount of additional force to get it going again. It's going to take a lot more energy and effort to re-engage the forward progress of that big rock. And so when we don't 
keep momentum in mind when we're planning, uh, we can we can actually create a lot more extra time and energy going back and figuring out where we're at, cleaning things up, and getting it done the right way had we not kept that in mind. And again, if we get going too fast, we have too many goals, too many activities, then we start to spin out of control, right? That rock's going to go flying. We're going to experience chaos. And so the quality of our work uh, and the effectiveness of, of our work is going to be extremely diminished if we're going too fast. There will be errors. There will be omissions. The goal probably won't get accomplished in the time frame you're hoping. So one of the best ways I found to keep and maintain a healthy momentum is that quarterly uh, review and planning process. We've talked about it a number of times in different ways in this podcast. And individually, that started with the 12-week planning process. We make we take our longer-term vision and goals and we chunk them down into quarters. And then we determine what weekly habits and activities we need to do in order to accomplish those quarterly goals. Longer-term goals are hard to accomplish because there's no chance to review and change you know, the course course correct in the process. And that's where a quarterly planning process will allow you to pause and reflect and adjust regularly so that you can keep that momentum going correctly. The other thing uh, is as a company, we've done our uh, entrepreneurial operating system or EOS for a large organization. Maybe it's a different tool, but we have our quarterly um, goals and activities that help us accomplish our longer term vision and goals. We have reflection and accountability and planning built into that process so that we're constantly evaluating and course correcting to maintain that healthy momentum. If we get going too fast, we can course correct to slow it down. If we're going too slow, we can course correct to speed it up and so on and so forth. So again, uh, Traction by Gina Wickman is the EOS. There's several other good books and resources for that. Uh, the 12-week year concept was by the book 12-week plan or the 12-week year by Brian Moran. So success comes from taking the initiative and following up, persisting, eloquently expressing the depth of your love. What simple action could you take today to produce a new momentum towards success in life? And that quote is from a uh, motivational speaker, Tony Robbins. Again, he says, success comes from taking the initiative and following up, persisting, eloquently expressing the depth of your love. In our case, maybe our service and care for our product and customer. So he asks, what simple action could you take today to produce a new momentum towards success in your life, and I'll add, or business. What is one thing you can do to effectively build and maintain a healthy momentum towards growth? So take your business to a higher altitude by building and maintaining healthy momentum in your life and organization. So here's your aviation fun fact for the day. We're going to go back to April 17th of 1969, where we saw the first powered flight of the Martin Marietta X-24A. And again, as I talk to these, I always encourage you to Google uh, or search for a picture of these aircraft to provide some context. But according to Wikipedia, uh, the X-24 was an American experimental aircraft developed uh, from a joint United States Air Force and NASA program named Pilot uh, in the uh, mid-60s to 70s. The X-24 was one of a group of lifting bodies flown by the NASA Flight Re uh, Research Center, now the Armstrong Flight Research Center, in a joint program with the, with the Air Force at uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California. The lifting bodies were used to demonstrate the ability of pilots to maneuver and safely land wingless vehicles designed to fly uh, to, uh, back to Earth from space and be landed like an airplane at a predetermined site. So again, look it up to get the picture, get the visual with it, the uh, Martin Marietta X-24. Uh, until next time, keep your wheels up and your attitude high. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Business Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share with someone who could benefit from its content. You can stay up to date by subscribing in iTunes or your podcast player of choice. This episode is brought to you by Aris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence in aviation insurance. To find out more, go to arisinsurance.com. That's A-E-R-I-S insurance.com.